Hello there YouTube, Devin here again, and uh, today I have another uh, second video today. I have another helmet comparison video, and this was one that was requested, and it is a uh, comparison of the British Mark VI and the Israeli Orlite. Now, both of these helmet designs uh, came around in the early to mid-80s. Um, I know that the uh, Orlite uh, started, be fielding, started being fielded, the exact date's kind of hard to pin, uh, 1983, uh, I believe, and the um, Mark VI is 1985. So, along with the Pazgat, these are both um, pretty much the world's first three effective composite helmets out there. Um, now, this video is actually a, a very good video, because I haven't seen these helmets compared before, and uh, though they are both quite early uh, versions, this is the a very early um, Orlite 304, and a very, um, this is a later Mark VI, this is like an 88 Mark VI, and I think this is an 87 Orlite. Um, but these helmets, um, were used by, uh, Israel and many other countries, uh, actually still use the Orlite, and a lot of countries, uh, widely adopted the Orlite or copied it. Yugoslavia copied it for the MPC-1, which is now Slovenia, uh, used it as the, uh, MPC helmet, um... The Russians copied it to a certain degree, and they changed it a little bit, and they now have that as their ZSH helmet. Uh, the Chinese copied it. The uh, uh, Irish used it for a while. The Canadians tested it. South Africa used it. Um, the Mark VI, as far as I know, was really just British. Nobody really wanted to go with the ballistic nylon. Um, the Orlite, this Orlite, is made out of Kevlar, but the early ones were made out of fiberglass, and there's a couple... Um, Recently, I did some reading, and I found out there's a few ballistic nylon uh, test examples out there uh, to see if it was any more effective than fiberglass or uh, Kevlar or anything like that. When they were looking to make new materials out of this helmet instead of fiberglass, they were. Uh, there's a couple of them made out of ballistic nylon that I've recently seen kind of start to circulate around. Um, this helmet is made out of ballistic nylon. Uh, ballistic nylon has a lot of good properties over Kevlar in the fact that it's, um, it's a little bit more, it's easier to work with than Kevlar and it has an unlimited shelf life. It doesn't actually lose any ballistic effectiveness ever. It's, it's got an unlimited shelf life, whereas Kevlar breaks down over time and it's recommended to replace your helmet every, uh, eight to ten years on, uh, Kevlar. So, and on Kevlar panels and body armor, every four to five years, you should um, replace your panels uh, because they lose their ballistic effectiveness, which is logistically bad because it's, you know, you have to make more, that means, even if you're not using them. So, but the Mark VI served Britain for a very, very long time, the last of them being phased out of, I think, around the early 2000s, it's so like 2012, 2013, uh, you saw very few of these still in use, if any, and uh, the Orlite is actually still in use in one form or another with Israel and many other countries, um, so we'll get into it, you can see the front profile here, uh, the marks, uh, the British helmets don't have a lot of um, uh, shell compromises such as screw holes or anything in the front, um, the Orlite has three rivets, in the front, um, and two two screw holes for the suspension, whereas the Mark VI only has the two screw holes. All right. Now we'll look at the side profile of each of these helmets here. Get them into position. They have a pretty pretty similar profile. It's a pretty sloped side profile. Now these have um, a couple different screws. These hold in the uh, this pin down here holds in the. Uh, shell adjustment and uh, up here you can use it to clip on a mask if you want to put on a riot mask or something now shell compromises on the side these ones are on the front so there's three on the side uh, taking some over from the front and there is four on this side um, profile 
uh, one being uh, one of the liner plugs that comes through the shell. Now, that is a very British helmet design. Uh, when all of these helmets were designed, the, shell, the liner was initially just held in with big long strips of Velcro, kind of like an ACH. Um, but it's a suspension liner inside a foam liner that was held in with Velcro. So it, the liner tended to shift and the Velcro tended to wear out and then the helmet liner would fall out and the helmet was useless. So in order to resolve that, it's still in held place with Velcro, but then they drove these rubber plugs through that foam liner and then through the shell to make sure the liner stays in place and it doesn't come out. And uh, so if you do cut those plugs too low or you do remove them, they, uh, you are ruining the shell. They don't really, the plugs can be hard to find because each of the plugs is a different size. So the Mark 6 A ones won't fit in the Mark 6 and the Mark 7 ones won't fit in the Mark 6 and the Mark 6 ones won't fit in the Mark 6 A or the Mark 7. So it's just hard to find parts. So I recommend if you do get one, don't mess with the liner. Um, so we'll take a look at the rear here now. Now, Another standard British helmet's design is to have no neck taper on it, which has problems with these helmets because they tend to bite um, and they tend to interfere with body armor because there's no neck taper in the back. And then you can see the, the two spikes for the liner on the Mark VI and the one screw hole to hold in the three-point chin strap. Now the Orlite does have a very shallow taper, um, but this helmet sits very high on the head, very snug on the head. And you can see the, the back three liner rivets. Um, so now, as you can see, uh, the Mark 6A is a little bit bigger. These are both in size medium, by the way. It's a little bit taller, a little bit wider. The Orlite's a little bit shorter, a little bit um, narrower. It's an all-around more compact helmet. Um, the Orlite's only really came in three sizes, small, medium, and large, whereas the British have extra small, small, medium, large, and outsized, so they have five sizes. Uh, which makes for a more tailored fit. Um, so, we'll look at the liners here now. Um, all right. So as you can see, they're pretty much the same thickness. They're 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 both thinner than an ACH. So I don't think that these have a 3A rating. Uh, they're probably both slight, slightly under that. Um, they have pretty similar. Uh, chin straps. Both of them are three-point. Uh, the British have a snap type suspension uh, adjustable through slider buckles up there at the top and held in place with uh, elastic keepers. Um, and they have a full chin cup so it's not split. Um, the Israeli helmet has a leather covered split chin strap made out of nylon with leather keepers in metal slider buckles but it's pretty much the same setup. D-ring in the back Y straps, all right. These are uh, the British use cotton in theirs. Uh, these uh, the Israeli ones are all nylon. So even the suspension, which is rooted in place, is all nylon. It's reminiscent of a late M1 style liner. Um, as you can see with the uh, overlap in there, which kind of do, uh, got rid of that same bite that you had uh, from the ring, uh, the ring that's in the uh, Pazgats and the uh, early M1s. Uh, they have this ring to adjust the uh, circumference, well the height of the um, crown and that is a, uh, this is a good way to get rid of that. You just have overlapping straps and they, all three of them adjust individually here in the back of the helmet as you can see the excess of one of the straps right there. Um, the Mark VI has the Pazgat donut style um, crown adjustment which makes this helmet very uncomfortable to wear if you don't have hair or a hat or something on. Um, it's also very narrow, as you can see. There's a lot of space on either side of the suspension because it's uh, very narrow, and that makes the helmet very uh, laterally unstable. It tends to rock from side to side. Um, it's adjusted uh, circumference-wise here in the back by this one little slider buckle and some extra, which pulls this whole, whole assembly here forward. Um, it's got a nice leather pad in the back and a nice leather pad in the front. Um, and there is the big styrofoam liner that you see. Um, it's easy to see. There's the um, the plugs right here. There you go. You can see them. Those are the plugs that go through the liner shell and into the helmet out the back here. So those are those rubber plugs sticking through. Those two kind of black circles in there. Now, the M1 suspension is pretty much exactly an M1. 
It's adjustable here in the back. Uh, it has your standard kind of M1 suspension held in place with the metal clips. And uh, that's about it. Um, it's not padded or anything. Uh, they do have a brow pad. Uh, they do. Uh, they did have a nape pad. They do have side pads on these. Uh, but mine uh, fell off and I just haven't got around to gluing them on yet. You can see that the squares where the glue where they used to be. It's not very finished here on the inside. Um, but this is a pretty important piece of history. This is Canadian uh, test ore light. So I didn't want to like fuck with it because these are extremely rare. Um, so I don't want to ruin it or anything. So if they f I keep the pads with it and um, I don't uh, mess with this helmet because it's incredibly rare and expensive. So... Um, but all in all, these helmets are actually fairly similar. Uh, they're pretty similar in shape and profile and protection rating. Uh, and they're both very, very early designs. So you could tell that some, some people were thinking pretty similar, even though entirely disconnected. I don't think, uh, these helmets are based off of each other or anything, but they might share some ideas from, uh, earlier designs or earlier, uh, uh, somethings, but I don't know what that is, uh, but these are two of my favorite helmet designs, actually. I really like British helmets, and uh, I really like uh, the Orlite in, in its respects because it's a very close-fitting, very nice, very lightweight uh, with relatively good coverage. It's a very comfortable helmet overall. Um, so I like both these helmets, and hopefully you guys like this video and you subscribe if you like this sort of thing. Um, hopefully this video fulfilled your... Uh, expectations seeing both of these compared to each other because I haven't ever compared them and um, if you have any questions additional information or anything else you want to add or any suggestions for future videos feel free to drop those in the comments and I will do my best to answer them uh, as always thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you guys in the next video bye